Hey Changemakers, it's Julia Chow. Welcome back to this channel. Today we're going to discuss a very important topic of what to do when somebody breaches your boundaries, even involving your intellectual property. I always talk about social elegance and how it is absolutely unideal for you to talk bad about people. Do not gossip about people. But what do you do when you have to protect your reputation, speak up, and that involves another person who has clearly breached you and has done you wrong? The socially elegant strategy that you want to implement is to state the facts rather than going into a place where you come across emotional, angry, and subjective about the person. You don't want to make the moral and ethical decision for your listeners. You don't want to call the other person names. You want to stick to the facts and allow other people to make the decision about this person. To help you understand how to do this better, I'm going to share with you a personal anecdote. Many years ago, I had a group coaching program for business, online business specifically, and social media organic lead generation. In that group, there were all women and they were building their own businesses and leveraging social media to get clients. One of my clients was somebody that I met in my personal life. She was going through a career transition and she was in a line of work that had nothing to do with business, nothing to do with social media or marketing. In fact, her line of work was very far away from anything to do with business or sales. And she was coming from that background, which is an important context that's going to matter later. Everything I was teaching in that group was brand new for her. As I mentioned, she was someone I happened to meet in my personal life, which is unusual for me because most of my clients, and if you worked with me, you would know I have never met. They live in all parts of the world and we connect through mostly organic social media content. There was already a red flag. I noticed that she was really reluctant to pay me to join this program, even though I could see that her content really wasn't landing to the people that she wanted to reach. It was really obvious that she really wanted to go full time in her business. She definitely did have potential in many different ways, but that reluctant feeling that I felt later on in retrospect wasn't something to be ignored. When somebody that you know clearly knows that you're doing this type of work and if they see you as an expert and they respect you in that regard, they'd be much more open to working with you. And I didn't really get the sense that she wanted to work with me. She knew that I had experience in business, in finance. I'm a second generation entrepreneur. I've been in sales for many, many years, and I don't need to go into all those details to convince you. But I came from that kind of background and I had already done quite a lot of social media work, including running ads by that point. So I had quite a lot of expertise. And when somebody knows that and sees that, you think that based on their desire, they'd want to opt in and work with you. But when they're repelling away from you, that's already a red flag that you should not ignore. But at the time, I was still much more of the good girl. I had much less of the business mindset, bad bitch mindset that I talk about. And when you hear the rest of the story, you will know exactly why you need to become more of the bad bitch become ruthless when it comes to your boundaries and knowing your worth and reading signs when somebody clearly already doesn't respect you because the more you let that person into your circle, your the knowledge, your network, your expertise, they're not going to respect that space. They're, they're going to take it for granted and they're going to take, try to take more from you, breach stealing. And that's exactly what ended up happening. After way too much of me giving value, she ended up joining this program. And at first she was doing really well. She was taking it in and she was excelling. So I started to forget the gut feeling I had previously. I really did zone in to help her more. And because she was getting results, she wanted to pay for the next level. And, and so it seemed to be going well. And when we start to see evidence of the, the opposite of what we felt in our gut feeling, we completely dismiss our gut feeling. So I was making space a lot more for her. I wanted to really help her excel. And so I was showing up from that intention. 
A few months down the road, she started to poach my clients from this group. At first, I didn't think that's what was happening. I thought that perhaps my clients were reaching out to her specifically for something, but even that can be groomed to happen. There was a clear policy that everybody signed that they were to to never serve their own business offers in the group because I have been in groups where it becomes very, very messy. It's very difficult to go after people once you've decided that you want to like that person. And that's exactly what I experienced. I didn't have enough proof to meet up with her and tell her that she's breaching the contract. It would have been too difficult for me to talk to my individual clients, ask those prying questions without coming across like I was against her, I was gossiping, or I was conspiring against her. I need to first protect my reputation while observing and watching the breach that was clearly happening in front of me, but I didn't have enough tangible proof without having to dig that information from other people, from multiple people, And that would make me come across like somebody who wants to destroy her. I also start to notice that some people were seeing her example because she would announce how much money she was making in the group. I could see that people were getting it, that she was poaching clients from the group and they were wanting to do the same thing. So when you have one bad apple in, in a group and you do not nip it in the bud, then the whole crate goes rotten. This is a leadership lesson for you that you need to take on and take in to always nip it in the bud and never over deliver, never overextend to people who don't seem to get your value immediately. If you have to do any level of convincing, it's not a good fit. Surely there's a a difference in educating people or helping them feel safe to opt in. But if you have to convince that person that you are the person that you can help them, that your knowledge, your expertise really matters and is superior, if they're not able to see that immediately, then absolutely not a fit. It doesn't matter what kind of face they're putting on in front of you. What I ended up doing is that I just disbanded the group. It was taking up too much energy for me to police and try to maintain my boundaries. But I never would forget what happened. And in fact, she was not part of my little black book of people that I consider enemies. And I would keep track on her and check on her. After a couple of years, I spoke to one of my clients who had been convinced by her to join her program. And when I had this conversation with my client, it came out very naturally from her that she joined this program thinking that she was going to get specifics of something totally different. Uh, uh, The kind of service that she was looking for was to improve her skills uh, when it came to coaching people in, uh, in her niche, which they had a shared niche rather than getting business coaching guidance. And what she ended up getting when she opted in was all business coaching. Now, I mentioned earlier on that this woman's level of expertise in business, social media, finance, were zero to none. I know that for a fact because we've had many conversations about this between me and her. That's why I suspected that when she was coaching women in their business, she was regurgitating most of my content or whatever she picked up from other people too in her program, which is not coming from a place of experience and results that she's created for herself and other clients too, is coming strictly from stealing other people's work. What I do know for sure is that she still had her day job because her line of work requires her to register with her committee, or I don't know what to call it, organization and sign up for continuing education every single year. She has to renew her license and that license is public. She has renewed the license every single year. And I've been keeping tracks of it, taking screenshots, saving it in case one day I need to show the receipts. And I recommend all my clients to do the same. So my client goes on and tells me how the program was 
not what she expected, almost exactly the same thing that I was teaching, um, but she wasn't making any traction for obvious reasons. She hasn't, she hadn't really grown since we had worked together and she was curious about working together again. So how I talked to my client about making the decision to work with that former client of mine was simply stating that in general, it is not in your best interest to work with somebody in business coaching, someone who still has a day job, first of all. Second of all, someone who doesn't have client results to show for, someone who doesn't have a lot of experience in business, social media, marketing, and sales, someone who doesn't have an extensive amount of experience, but most importantly, to pay attention to what kind of success has that person created for other people? Even if there are only a handful of people, were those people able to get results as a result of this person's coaching? If they don't have that kind of result, then and on top of everything else, not be going full time in their business, having a day job and not coming from that background where all the skills and experience knowledge is built previously. Because again, when you pay a coach, you're paying for not just knowledge, you're paying for experience, you're paying for the nuances, the wisdom, everything that comes with it. And that takes time. It takes a lot of time. You cannot cheat time through knowledge and reading something or experiencing a little bit of this or that. Uh, basically, I convinced my client to see it from that perspective. My client understood, and it is not up to me to control what she does. This is very important when you apply these concepts to your experiences and how you navigate these types of conflicts that you come across. Do not try to control the other person's behavior. You state the facts. You let them make decision. You let them see the person for who they're being. If my client, based on our conversation, decides to go talk to other members about her understanding of the situation, then justice is served without me calling somebody names or speaking ill about or gossiping. That was the intention and the impact I wanted to create. Not once did I accuse a person of stealing my work, regurgitating other people's work, but potentially being unethical and just being a person of low integrity in general. I did not accuse a person once in front of my client. That is a decision that the client or the person has to make based on the facts that you share. I wanted to protect my reputation while sharing the truth. The intention that I had was to make sure that, that uh, my reputation is protected when I have the opportunity to have that conversation with someone who had experienced it. I would say to some level, making this video and telling this story too has somewhat of that purpose. It was many years ago. I did experience a form of injustice. I do feel like that person scammed and stole from me. I do find a, a, a horrible boundary breach when it comes to tapping into the people that I curated, my network, the level of disrespect I felt from that person, not just from the story that I shared, but in many nuances of other situations, micro situations I experienced with that person. It's tremendous. And I always say that disrespect cannot be repaid with respect. Disrespect needs to be called out. And if I had been the bad bitch that I am today, I would have done that immediately. But again, we live and learn. The process of the journey isn't about it isn't black or white. It isn't going from the good girl to the bad bitch next day. It's a nuanced journey. You recognize, you become better at it. The more you practice, the more you practice understanding and recognizing boundary breaches, knowing how to maintain that, knowing how to create space for yourself and to keep your own integrity, seeing the person for exactly who they're being, beyond the mask of niceness and friendliness that they're portraying to get close to you. Seeing signs of disrespect right away and handling it because again, one bad apple rots the whole crate. 
It is also important to know the value of your network. You have to protect your network because network is the most valuable asset that you can allow somebody in to tap into. The people that you know, the circle that you curated, that needs to be difficult to access. And if you're an entrepreneur and you're charging clients money, network is worth a lot more than you realize. Your network is leverage in capitalism. Deeply understand this and protect it at all costs from people who are snakes, people who have bad intentions or do not have the desire or the intention to respect you in that space. Actually, going down the memory lane, I forgot to mention this one critical piece of information is how the person portrays herself. She loves to talk about women supporting women. In public, that's what she preaches all the time. That's what a lot of her content is about. Women circle, women supporting women, women this, women that. We have to support and love each other, da, da, da. And this is the behavior that she actually, that she actually practices when she is dealing with a woman who is more accomplished and had the intention to help her allowed her into the space and i know the incredible transformation that i helped her facilitate and she repays it with disrespect this is why the bad bitch transformation is so important for you if i hadn't learned those lessons i couldn't be where i am now i couldn't keep the success that i have not only to get to a destination but to maintain and to grow from there that's why this journey that you're on and the lessons that you're learning is so important let me know what you think about this content this concept the story i shared have you experienced something similar like this i would love to know comment down below Thank you so much for watching. Let's keep the conversation going. I'm looking forward to creating more amazing content for you. So if you have any ideas of what you would like to receive next, also comment down below. If you're ready for more bad bitch transformation to accelerate in the process, because again, as you can see from my video that competence alone isn't enough, people skills will make or break you. If you like to accelerate in that area and become the bad bitch, accelerate the process right now, today, then go down to the description below and I have many options. You can join our free uh, change maker community. That's if you don't have much to start with or you just want to get a taste of what it's like, you can read my book, Bad Bitch on Top. You can also join the free masterclass that I have, which is about social elegance. And we have more than one part. We have social elegance, power dynamics are everywhere. And then we have the social elegance, allies versus friend, which actually fits a lot into today's topic. So that's available for you for free as well. When you watch that and you really love it, you want more, the social elegance accelerator course is linked to that. Once you do that course and you like to grow more from that, then then it's an option to join our group coaching program, Unleashed. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being in this space with me and being a part of our community. It's Julia Cha. I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Bye for now.